All right, family, we're back on mobile Facebook Live. I'm your host, Kevin Orris, and I'm going to start doing some interview series back on Facebook Live, which I haven't been on in a while. And today I'm going to speak with Sigourney Weaver, who's an amazing Sigourney Bell Weaver, which many of you will know. She's an amazing, epic soul, and this time it's going to work. Boom. So if you're joining live, type in the comments if you can hear us. You can drop your questions, comments, and gratitude, one word gratitude, where you're tuning in from. And if you watch <laughs> later, type in replay, and it's working. Good morning. Yeah, I can hear uh -huh. you. I'm just having a little bit of a giggle at the fact that you called me Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> Is that what I just did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stop <laughs> aliens. Fuck. She's like a few. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so good. It's Sigourney pretty Weaver? similar. You know the actress of Aliens and Ghostbusters? And oh, Avatar, that's, actually. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, yeah. there you go. That, that's apparently who my subconscious thinks you are. So that's pretty badass, actually. <laughs> I once actually got a tax return with her name on it. And I was like, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, wow. Because it's, it's Weldon, so it's pretty cool. Weldon. Weldon, okay. So yeah. I, was like, I was like four letters shy, but okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I don't know if you can see me. Are you on your, because your head is cut off on my screen. I don't know if you can. Have, there we have go. To just lean Are right you on back. your phone? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm on my phone. I can just put it forwards a little bit and see if that works. Sweet. Is that better? Can you see my head? Uh, your head's still cut off from my screen, but maybe it looks <laughs> different. This. Now you're sideways. Okay. I haven't done a Facebook Live like this in so long. Like, I don't know how it works. I think no, you just neither need have I. Like, your camera up. Okay, let's, let's try that. Okay, what about that? Is this what it feels like to be a boomer? It's like, <laughs> now I can see you. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, amazing. How are you? <sighs> I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm really good. Just, uh, my daughter's out there. You can probably hear um, Sesame Street on in the background. Nice. She's meant to be asleep, but she's just got, yeah, she's crazy. So, she's <laughs> um, yeah, so if I get interrupted, if she comes running in, um, that's what's happening. Just to All good. let you know. All good. Well, this is amazing. Yeah. I've been wanting to do this this interview for a while. I never actually had you on my podcast, even though I think we might have talked about it and We've been at some events together and I've just been following you for years now. And I, yeah, I'm really impressed and struck by some of the words and, and, and like impressions you bring, bring through it. Does feel unique and powerful. And I'm curious, how would you introduce yourself, Sigourney Weldon? Oh, how would no. you introduce yourself for people that don't <laughs> know your work? How do I introduce myself today? That's the question. Um, okay, me. Who am I? <sighs> I've journeyed many cycles. Um, where I am today, I'm an author, best-selling author. I write for um, Forbes. And I, I feel like my work in the world is around culture change. So it's around changing the culture of society in which I feel like right now we're at a breaking point with. And so my work's currently evolving. Um, I have a couple of really beautiful bodies of work such as Soma Mystica which is all around the whole principle of it is the body is the mystery school it's like the mystery school is inside of us and so it's mystery school teachings combined with esoterics combined with um, more like traditional therapeutic like techniques around trauma work um, so it's kind of bridging a few different sectors um, so that's who I am <laughs> and what I teach. Um, but what I really am passionate about at the moment is looking at basically rewriting constitution. Um, and I know we spoke about this the other day or we just had a little link up around the network state, but that's something that's like really, really alive for me at the moment is this change in a whole political socioeconomic structure of society. And um, it's something I've kind of been plotting from my bedroom since COVID hit. <laughs> and now it's like, it's here, you know, it's like, there's the infrastructure to actually hold all of this now. 
And so um, that's what's really exciting me. Well, yeah. yeah, and certainly there in Australia, you've had a front row seat to the opposite of what we want, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was actually yeah. living in America when it all hit and um, I just went into a massive freeze response and just felt to get out and come back home and got on the last flight from San Fran back to Australia. <laughs> and um, yeah, things have escalated. I've had a baby since then. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, we've been... Yeah, we've been hit pretty hard with it all. So, yeah, I often watch from a distance, like everyone overseas, how free people are. And I'm like, I feel like, <laughs> yeah, we've been pretty yeah, shuffled down here in Australia. I don't pretend to know, like, you know, the ins and outs, and I'm not a political, you know, commentator. But it seemed to me that Canada and Australia had, like, the most extreme crazy shit happening. And I'm curious, you know, there's this idea that they're experimental grounds or experimental states or something like this, where what wouldn't work in other countries can be rolled out there specifically around, you know, mandates mm. and various systems of control to keep us all safe. And I think this is where the beautiful conversation, which I'm much more interested in around network states, around blockchain, um, and around lawful versus legal. I don't know if you've been down this rabbit hole <clears throat> and what constitutions and sovereign people and citizenry and what even is a nation state, right? And how do we define, mm -hmm. you know, law? Like we, we need law and order because, <laughs> you know, we're not banging rocks together and, you know, hunter gatherers anymore. We have a global civilization. Law and order is important. I'm not an anarchist. Um, but I do think mm. that, yeah, the system is overdue for an evolutionary <clears throat> shift. And I think most people, most people, maybe it's barely 51% are at least aware of this conversation. And that's a mm. huge step in the direction of awareness. I'm curious for you, Sigourney, like what, what most excites you when you talk about like constitution, you talk about government, mm. like what is that, what does that look like for you personally? <clears throat> Yeah, it's quite funny because I just got accepted into law last week. <laughs> I randomly had this spark of inspiration to apply. I'm actually not going to, I'm not going to go back to uni. I, I pondered on it quite heavily, but it's just not my learning style. <laughs> I think for another four years of um, formal learning. Um, yeah, it's not for me. But um, yeah, I'm, I've been studying a lot around like, you know, the difference between public and private um, in terms of like, yeah, the legal structures. And um, I don't know if I go more into that. I've been exploring this notion around, you know, looking at like common law basically. And like the principle of with common law is like the only thing you can't do is an act of evil, evil. And so there's a lot of like, new structures popping up like a lot of people starting to create private entities and operate from private entities now which is like based upon common law and is not actually bound to state and federal constitution or the legal system <clears throat> so there's a lot of people creating their own legal structures at the moment and it's funny because mm -hmm. i spoke to a lawyer the other day she's like i don't know anything about this <laughs> like what is this does oh, this even exist wow. yeah I'm like, yeah <laughs> um so, yeah, it's like currently at the moment where my thread is going is to look at starting a ministry in the right. States in Washington, D.C., and then to basically create new constitutional systems in different areas. So like healthcare and like basically writing structures so that natural health can um, have its own registry body because you're actually you sit outside of the FDA and all of the governing bodies when you create your own private entity and you write your own legal system so this is what I'm looking at is like I came from inside of that space like I worked in western hospital systems for 10 years and I was trying to make changes in those spaces like I was trying to get meditation programs happening and it was just like it was like pushing up against a wall it's like I would come home every day so exhausted and like ended up just getting really sick I was like, I can't change it from inside. <laughs> like, and this is the other thread that I was having the other day when I was looking at applying for law. Cause I was like, it'd be beneficial in knowing their legal system, but also they're not educating on 
like how to do the things that I want to be able to do. Like, because right. it's, they don't want to empower people like that. They want, that's all secret hidden knowledge. Um, so it's like, well, that's, it's not really going to serve me to learn that. <laughs> like if right. I come up against issues, I can consult a lawyer, but I don't need to be one. Um, so I don't even know what the question was. <laughs> no, this is great. But yeah, it's, so many... it's basically I'm, I'm looking at creating something outside of the current system and then mm-hmm. creating um, basically the structure for then others to create their bodies of work outside of the system so that once people start to come onto this thread around the fact that they're not bound to a legal system, <laughs> if they, they know how to structure something alternative, um, that's just going to create a huge ripple and wave where we're able to start to outweigh like normal governance and constitution. And yeah, I don't feel like we can do it from inside. I feel like it's something we have to, yeah. Totally. And I love this line of thinking and I think it's really valuable. I know opening a ministry is a very common way. I have friends that have done that. And this is amazing to, tap into psychedelic medicine. I think that's one of the common ways. It also changes the tax structure, which can be very beneficial for folks that don't want to pay a ton of taxes that don't logically Mm. make a lot of sense. Um, And people will jump in and be like, well, you love roads and the mail service, right? And it's like, well, yes. But um, yeah, that's a whole rabbit hole of how tax money is spent (laughs) or how it's used. What's really valuable here, and let's go to the high level meta here. It's like, This is a question I'm always asking. And and what's crazy is, you know, once upon a time, I wanted to go into law. So when I was Mm -hmm. a kid and going up through high school and uni, I was like, okay, I don't like, I don't like math. I'm not good at it. I don't like the sciences. You know, I love biology and physics, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go into law. I'm going to be a lawyer, an attorney, a barrister, because I'm really good at language. And I love this idea mm. of the Hollywood courtroom and like debating and like defending justice. Yeah. You know? And that's what I thought I wanted to do. And I actually started in uni as a political science major. I quickly switched to psychology and philosophy because I started to realize that this was bullshit. And like you said, all the people I was talking with, I met lawyers, I met these professors and I was like asking all these questions and I was quite naive and, you know, a young lad, And they were just basically telling me without telling me that, like you said, changing the legal system from inside the legal system and a greater extent changing healthcare, changing government from inside those systems is extremely hard. Now there is incremental change and things are getting better all the time. I don't want to say that they're all bullshit because people are trying, right? And And they're doing amazing things. But the implicit agreements, it's an agreement field. So governance Mm. is an agreement field. And the implicit agreements and power dynamics that most people never even question. They don't even think that like, wait, could it be another way? And this is the gift of Corona is it it Mm. posed that question to everyone in a very tangible way Um, with their body, right? Mm. Whether it's masks or whether it's where you can go or freedom to travel or freedom to do business or freedom to express your speech or freedom to do your religion, whatever, pick, pick all the little pieces of this. I think everyone's asking that question now. And what's fascinating to me is that not only are there systems that you can explore and work with, like you're mentioning, but a lot of people have been concerned about this for a long time and you don't hear about them. And so for you, Sigourney, doing, you know, the work you're doing, like the amazing which is explaining with Soma Mystica and like you're just helping a lot of people I imagine get into their body get out of their bullshit and like be full power alive expressed sensual Mm -hmm. in their body successful in business etc how how do you want to express sovereignty are you feeling like you like you're saying making a sovereign entity is that mainly entrepreneurship for you or is it also community building is it also you know, having a ministry, having a way to, like you said, make your own law, frame, field, et cetera. Mm. Well, it's a bit of all of that, to be honest. (laughs) Um, The ministry is to create the frameworks for both myself and anyone that comes into my field that desires a framework to basically help them create their own systems that are according to their own value system. 
we're just kind of, when we're born into this world, we're just slotted into a value system that isn't necessarily our own. And I feel like you can create freedom from inside of that. Like I've utilized the system and, you know, created sex- successful businesses and like, I'm not one of those people that's like fully fuck the system. I'm so anti-system and uses that as a victimization pattern at all. Like I really can see that there's roots to success within the system. However, it feels like to me, there's like, there's always this cap there <laughs> of like how sovereign I can be because I'm in someone else's value system. And a lot of the way that the government utilizes money and funds is not aligned with who I am at my core. Mm-hmm. It's not earth centric. And so I can't represent, I can't, there's only so much I can do without like, feeling like this dissonance in me and this feeling like I need to break free. So for me, having like first step is ministry. I eventually want to look like at the whole network state route. Um, but having a ministry and being able to set my own guidelines and be able to create my own value system and then have community, like the whole idea around that is to then bring community in for them to slot into a value system that suits them as well. Um, that that's also about sovereignty for me. That's about like being able to set my own rules. And for me, it's all about, it's all about benefiting the earth community. Um, and yeah, this reciprocal sacred economy, I guess, where there's like energy flow that, um, is based upon my belief systems. Um, Mm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is really valuable, right? Do we, do we support a system that we're not value aligned with or is, is like really based on principles at its foundation that are anti-life? When I hear you say earth centric, you know, yeah. they're like anti-life. And, and that's, you know, you don't have to get all esoteric, although that's a whole rabbit hole. You can just look at their actions. Mm. Look at the actions of the, you know, top, leverage holding entities on the planet, many of which are actually corporate interests, not governments. And their actions don't tell me, they don't scream to me that they are for life, for humanity, for the family, you know, for the village and for the planet. So this is a big question that I think people tend to extremely polarize on and speaking about polarity, they either go full anarchy, fuck the system, you know, let's burn the constitution, the flags and blah, blah, blah. And that's been tried many times and it's never actually worked. There's also the people that say, this is the best system we have, like demo, like liberal republic, democratic capitalism is like the best we have, which on one level, I guess is true because it has gotten us to this point. So I don't want to dock it fully, but they kind of stop there. The other extreme is like, you know, we're not going to do any better. And that, that to me doesn't make any sense. And for those that don't know, the network state is a free book you can download online by our friend Balaji, who is an amazing thinker who has been part of like A16Z, Coinbase, you know, he's big in tech. And he basically has written this book and and detailed this idea of the network state in terms of creating a blockchain based DAO formed decentralized autonomous organization state that you can create based on your own value systems utilizing blockchain technology and utilizing you know capital or resources to structure your own state which a state is different than a nation nation he makes the distinction a nation is a people it's more about culture and your birth like sharing a common birth is like the nation state is more of the frame of you know law and order values and the setup of how we want to operate that and there's this whole debate of like which came first the nation or the state Um, i personally think obviously the nation came first because people and tribes Mm -hmm. pre-existed civilization for millions of years so this is a really interesting question i'm also thinking of legal versus lawful this is a whole mind fuck and there's many Mm -hmm. i'll let people do their own research on this i don't want to tell you who to listen to but there's many people that go deep into this about the difference between legal and lawful, which are not the same. For example, mandate, if you look at the Latin and back to Roman law, a mandate requires your consent. It's actually not, it's not coercion. You don't have to follow it. It's actually an offer to follow a mandate. It's like mandatum, if you go to the Latin and you can look up the etymology. 
but that's one of the mind fucks. People hear mandate, and they're like, oh, that's law, I have to do that, or it's, I'm gonna go to prison. It's like, it's not true. Mm. Now, the problem is if you, if you contest some of this stuff, or if you like question it, or you wanna go into court, um, it's extremely mm. difficult, A, to find a lawyer or a legal professional that will support that, although they do exist, and B, it's, uh, it's extremely financially and time expensive to get, yeah. <laughs> to get anything done in that legal framework. Which to me is like, okay, like Buckminster Fuller style. Why are we pushing our head up against the wall and fighting when the secret to change, as Bucky said, is just to build the new system that makes the old one obsolete. You don't need to, you don't need to destroy exactly. the old system and fight it and tear it down. Just build a new one. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what, that's what I ended up doing with Soma Mystica because I was in, as I said before, I was in that system and it was just, it was exhausting. Um, but there was a part, there's a part of me also that loves to fight. <laughs> sure. Damn. I got a strong warrior energy and it can be a bit addictive. So yeah, in the end I ended up surrendering and now I'm like, what's cool is like this body of work that I'm currently in. I've had doctors, nurses, like people in the healthcare system that are now taking this model into their workplace. So it's like, ironically, by surrendering and creating something outside of the system, it's actually impacting the system. Um, so I've got one woman that's a nurse manager of like a number of nurses in Australia, um, hospitals in Australia, that's going to be licensing this body of work to educate like health practitioners in hospital systems. I'm like, this is, <laughs> you know, this is what I wanted to do, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it from inside. So, and I think that's, that's often the case with visionaries. Um, I don't know if you know much about Gene Keys. I've got a line number six for my mm. vocation and it is really about stepping outside and just creating the vision and letting others implement it as well and take it where it needs to go. Um, right. Yeah. I love that. So in terms <clears throat> of, of like, what would you say your superpower is, Sigourney? Like when you're helping people into <laughs> Soma, which I love this idea of the body, the Soma is the physical reality, the cells, it's deeply spiritual at the same time, even though it's matter, it's the body, it's the, our form, our vessel. Going into that descension and expansion into that is actually the spiritual quest, as far as I see it. It's not mm -hmm. about leaving the body and becoming this energy being and transcending. You know, I think a lot of that is bullshit and a lot of people now are waking up to that. Um, for Soma Mystica <laughs> and your superpower, Sigourney, tell us more about that. Like, what, if someone that's watching, it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, and there's also, just back to what you were saying, there's a fine line between, you know, spiritual ascension practices and, and is this actually trauma and dissociation that is, like, being used as um, or framed as spirituality um, because it's it's very similar. There's a fine line there. Right. Um, and it's, yeah, it's harder. The, the process and pathway of descent is much harder. Um, what's my superpower? <laughs> Visiting people in their dreams as a snake. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is something I get often. People uh, say that I come to them as a snake and I hiss, actually hiss in my sleep. It's quite funny. Like when I've had partners, apparently I wake up hissing and I've got a fork tongue as well. So I've got like a bit of wow. a snake tongue. Um, that's not my superpower, but. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> that's one of them. Um <laughs> what would I say my superpower is? I mean, I'm highly, highly psychic and have been since I was a small child. So I work on the side as a medical intuitive. Um, basically if someone comes to me and has something going on, gives me consent, I can pinpoint exactly what's happening like within a couple of minutes um, and then shift that as well. So I'd say that that would be <laughs> my primary superpower. <laughs> That's a, that's a really useful superpower to have in the tribe. It is. <laughs> yeah. And I guess the other thing is um, a lot of people come out of my trainings with medical intuition as well. Uh, yeah. Basically give people the framework to learn how to cultivate that. <clears throat> yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love it. I actually didn't even know that about this. Today I learned. Yeah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> So let's talk about let's talk about network state. I've been deep in Web three the past two years. <clears throat> I've been interested in crypto since I think twenty fourteen. 
2013. And mm -hmm. I, I learned a lot, um, both on the market side and also on the tech side, and have just been in student mode. I, I, I'm not an expert at all. Nothing we're about to say is financial advice for the folks watching, but what about the network state struck, struck you? And like, and with synchronicity, I was literally mm. listening to a podcast with Balaji on the Bankless podcast, which is amazing. I recommend that to it's everyone. such a good podcast. And you messaged me as I was listening to it. We were like chatting about, okay, what topics for our interview? And you were like, network state. I was like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had my nose in that book. Um, and I listened to that podcast that evening. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I just love him. I feel like it's what's <laughs> sorry. Here we go. Say hi. Hey, little one. <laughs> Cameo appearance. <laughs> um, what's exciting me about that is I feel like for about two or three years, I've been seeing, like almost in my dreams, I've been seeing all of this forming, like more on a metaphysical level. And um, then when I found the book, I was like, this is exactly what I've been seeing. Hi. This is this is exactly what I've been seeing and feeling. This whole principle of creating something outside of the current legal system and state. Mm -hmm. And when um, he spoke about it being cloud based, I was like, "This totally makes sense." Because yeah. something that I've been seeing unfolding for years is like basically all of these communities popping yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, beautiful. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So good. Um, <laughs> she's so social and loves the limelight. She loves it, um, yeah. <laughs> she does. All of these communities popping up around the globe that are becoming self-sufficient and decentralized and, you know, creating their own token systems. And, and about a couple of years ago, I saw these communities being formed and I saw this centralized app <laughs> Sorry, guys. app that was like linking them all and I saw it being very cloud-based I was like oh, okay and I've just been sitting with that vision for a while just gonna move. <laughs> and um <laughs> when this popped up I was like this is this is it um because he speaks about it first starting in the cloud and when there's momentum then you know getting capital and actually forming these um, networks on the ground, like making them land-based community projects. And yeah, that's, that's what I see happening. <laughs> it's happening right now. I mean, I, I feel like in Portugal, they're kind of yeah. leading edge with it. There's a lot of places, not where I am. <laughs> There's nothing happening here in Australia yet. I'm um, sure there will be soon though, because the, the demand is so high there that yeah. there must be someone implementing these ideas quietly, you know, doing the, the groundwork. And for those that don't, those that don't know, I mean, you can, the book is free. Balaji is giving it away, um, which mm. is amazing. So, you know, go check out the network state. You can just Google it, go to his Twitter. There's a lot of info there. There's a lot of podcasts. He just breaks it all down. The two I would recommend is go listen to the Tim Ferriss podcast with Balaji or the Bankless. Those are the two best I've heard. And it's basically the idea of a network-based state, right? So a decentralized-based network, which is blockchain-based. And all the blockchain means is it's a digital way to have a ledger without a middleman. What's a ledger? It's a way to store information and, and share transactions. And it's transparent. It is decentralized in that there's not like one computer that's doing it or one man or woman that's like, hey, this is how it works. It's, it's, it's distributed like a mycelial network in the forest floor, right? There's all these like networks and nodes, and then you can access the network from many different places, right? And it's very resilient to attack. It's very resilient against bad actors, like someone wanting to come in and fuck someone over, or steal or cheat or whatever. So this is really amazing. And I would recommend everyone to do your own research on this. But a network state is basically you make it first in the cloud in the blockchain. And then instead of like, oh, we should build a city over there and like, well, is there water? Is there stuff? Like, can we grow crops? You could build the community, the voting structure, the governance, it's decentralized. So there's some kind of consensus mechanism and there's many different theories on how to do this. It's not one way. 
and then take that community that's very capitalized. So they might have millions or billions of dollars because a lot of people that are wealthy or successful are interested in these ideas because they see that the way nation states have been operating since Bretton Woods, which is post-World War II global economy, is very maladaptive. And we can see that playing out now with Russia, Ukraine, U.S. Civil War, Corona, you know, there's a, there's a whole laundry list and you're going to have to figure out where you sit on this, this topic. But the idea is that a network in the cloud can pick a site and create an intentional community. And they already have capital. They already have a network. They already have village council. They already have values and aligned principles. They already have a plan and the resources to implement it. And this will become increasingly the case for people that do not want to play by the traditional systems that have demonstrated to us time and time again. Um, pardon my French, they don't give a fuck about me or you, and they don't give a fuck about nature. And so for me, it's like, why would I work with those systems and give them all my energy and attention and, and finance and emotion mm. you know, beyond what I have to, right? I think there is wisdom and render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. There's something to that phrase in the Bible and there's, there's real magic there, you know? Um, but yeah. What kind of network state would you want to live in, Sigourney, or how would you want this to play out? Like, can you describe it for us? Love it. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm currently in the phase of creating the governance system and, like, the the constitution. Um, eventually, I would love to be <laughs> living in community, um, decentralized community. Um, I was speaking with a friend, Damien Bowler. Do you know Damien? Mm-hmm. He has evolutionary relating. That's his baby body of work. Mm. I was speaking to him the other day about having a community that has, um, it's basically something you can plug into, but there's a way of um, creating a system that's based upon even maybe even gene keys and human design that plugs people into their genius that creates communities where people are uh, like, it's basically like a syntropic kind of system. You know, I kind of equate it to being like syntropic agroforestry um, mm. in that like it's, it's an ecosystem that is in, in dodges, endogenously um, creating energy and energy is flowing naturally and it's syntropic as opposed to entropic, which means that mm. energy is not stuck. It's like it's always moving, flowing. There's like life force. We could look at the nervous system. It's like the nervous system's in flow. It's in that social engagement system. But the way I see that we need to do that is through radical sovereignty and individuation, like knowing our genius and then being able to come back into community from that place. Um, like a lot of communities, I feel like, have all of these this rigidity. It's like you need to be doing this, this and this in order to contribute. It's like right. that person's not designed to do that. <laughs> you know, that person's a visionary. That w They would be better off there. This person is more likely to be on the ground doing that that work. That's what they love. Put them there. And it's like that the culture and the community is based upon people's genius and making sure that there's a balance in that. And so there's this like natural flow of energy and there's not like, you know, it's not a system that's created out of guilt and feeling like there's obligation. And that's, that's something for me that's always put me off community. Yep. It's like this feeling of like, I don't want to do that. Like, like I want to contribute. <laughs> I want to feel seen. I want to, but I, this is the way that I contribute. And, um, yeah, I feel like our society currently is going through this radical individuation stage, um, ready for creating community in a different way. Um, so that's kind of what I see needs to be templated almost to Im imprint mm -hmm. onto physical community. Um, and then, yeah, I would love to live in a community like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was interviewing and speaking with Jordan Hall. If people know Jordan Hall, Jordan Green Hall on Twitter. He has a medium blog called Deep Code. He's a really deep thinker about game deep actually, right? And a lot of what we're describing here is game B. Um, game B is basically the evolution, like you're saying, a centropic version outside game A. Because game A right now that we're in is entropic. It's, it's winner take all. It's zero sum which means that somebody loses to have someone win, right? And this is where you get 
classism, mm -hmm. racism, whatever, like all the all the maladaptive stuff is because of basically a deep, deep scarcity trauma in the human psyche that's governing yep. all the systems, right? And um, yep. Jordan was basically saying this idea of kuleana, which is a Hawaiian word, which means like dharma, basically, or like, what is mine to do? Mm. So what you are mm. best at tracking and seeing or feeling is actually what you're supposed to be doing in the community. So someone is going to be really good at planting crops and doing permaculture design. They're really good at it and they love doing it. That's the other piece. It doesn't feel like work to mm. them. They actually go crazy about it. That's their role. That's their kuleana. Let them do that in the community. Don't try to make them do something else. And the part where this gets triggering for people is some people's kuleana is to lead mm. and structure the vision, right? And those people are actually going to be best at that. It doesn't mean they're better or worse than the, than the farmer or the permaculture designer. It doesn't mean they're better or worse than the laborers that are literally just going to chop wood and carry water because that's actually what they love doing and they're strong. Like, like they do it. It, 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 that's not what it means. It's about, you know, and this is where gene keys and synarchy and human design come in. You know, you don't want a reflector doing physical labor. The reflector is the canary in the coal mine that's going to attract the whole tribe. You, you, need, you need that reflector to actually be relaxed, sink to the moon, able to, you know, have all the stuff they need. And you probably also don't want your manifestors to be laborers and you know, in a generator role where they're trying to keep up with sacral generators, you know, so I, I geek out on this stuff. I need to research human mm. design more. So it's inspiring me because I, I, I love it and I know a lot, but I want to know even more. And I think, yeah, most of the intentional communities and I've visited a lot, I've lived in a few for short periods of time, a month or two at a time. They have a lot of the same baggage of like the system they're trying to rebel against, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. and there's a science mm -hmm. to it. It's just a science to living together and doing community and doing governance. Yeah, totally. <laughs> she, she knows that you're like doing something, and so she's like, "I'm gonna do something too. I want to make sure. I want to be. I want to be seen." <laughs> so funny because i'm i'm really deeply introverted and she's um she's a little socialite so i go to the cafe to do some writing or something i'm just in my shell and she's just like getting everyone's attention next minute everyone's like surrounding me and i'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> medicine um it's <laughs> beautiful yeah i love i love that and um Damien might be someone you may love to uh, follow, actually. Yeah, send me his work. I'd love to connect. Will do. Will do. Mm. So <laughs> before we start to wrap up here, Sigourney, um, yeah, if people want to get involved with Soma Mystica or like what, anything else you're really excited about, where would they find that besides your Facebook page or where would they go? Yeah, beautiful. I can actually make you an affiliate landing page if you want, so you can link it. Um, cool. But my Instagram is Soma Mystica. S O M A M Y S T I C A. And uh, the website is Soma Mystica.com. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Cerulea, uh, named after Nymphaea Cerulea, the Blue Lotus. It's Latin Ooh, name. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's a royal name right there. Yes. She, uh, <laughs> yes. She was uh, con conceived during a blue lotus dieta. Mm. On a f the full moon, December 30th, 20 2020. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I think beautiful. there's two links. Yeah. Or you can just. <laughs> Follow me and I'm posting mostly about these kind of topics. Uh, so my Instagram is my best. <laughs> the best place to follow me at Sigourney Bell. Awesome. Well, Cerulea, thank you for your contribution. I really love having your voice here too. And this has been amazing. There, there's so many rabbit holes from this talk. And I think uh, we'll have every, we'll link everything here, but Network state folks, rethink 
Rethink legal structures, rethink governance, rethink business and community. Just start, like, the, the, the burden here is the education. Just get educated, get informed, ask questions, go, go, go learn about this stuff. It's really fascinating. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate this conversation, and we might have to do another one going to gonna, all the other topics we didn't cover. I was going to plug my future book, which will be out before March 2020, which is called Ecclesia. Uh, derived from the Greek word, which basically was the start of law politics, but also it means church. Church derived its word from uh, its um, name from ecclesia, which was basically it means um, those that are summoned, so those mm. that feel feel the call. And um, it was yeah, it was the original structure um, behind. <laughs> Um, behind religion um, was just it was just meant a, pe a group of people that gathered. Um, so right. the book is all around what's its tagline is rewilding constitution, and it'll be teaching people how to set up their own constitutions and private states. Fucking love that ecclesia! I love that. That's yeah. what I learned today. Those who are summoned, church, religion, That's governance. Right sacred the profane there's all roots there in these these beautiful mystery religions and the philosophies that like all western civilization has its roots in so i geek out on that stuff and that's that sounds exciting well sister appreciate you this has been amazing if you guys are watching this tag somebody share this video because there's some bombs in here there's a lot of truth and a lot of really research opportunities for all of you watching because there's so much good stuff in here and make sure you're following Sigourney and check her out and uh yeah talk soon love Good it well. so nice to speak to you see you Kevin